Hey, hi, howdy, and hello, friends. It's Wickedy here with a video that has been requested of me quite a few times, actually. So over the years, I have made tons of farms that I use for either fun or for set pieces for some of my videos, as you can see from this area right here. But what you don't see is the massive mess of the rest of my farm because I played it and I just use it for display or for, for various different reasons and just kind of let it go. Honestly, it's kind of embarrassing. And so I'm going to be going over quite a few of these farms and fixing them all up so that they can all be something that I can actually be proud of to show off. Now I'm going to start off with my very first farm, the one that I featured in my perfection video. This farm I played mostly vanilla. I did use a couple of mods a few years ago, but it was the UI info suite and scythe harvesting. So nothing too crazy. I will be using the CJB cheats menu, which is linked below so that we can keep our time paused and have an infinite amount of stamina, as well as being able to insta grow some trees because this is just my display farm. I've already made all my money here. So now it's time to retire and kind of show everything off. Oh, and of course, I'll be editing in all of the speed ups that you all love so much too. Now let's take a look at this giant mess. My very first farm, I did start with the standard farm because I thought that's what you were supposed to do. <laughs> so here we have the mess. It is very disorganized, um, but it's okay. I have a great idea of what to do with what I want to do with it and all that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually clear up all of the space. There are so many trees, there's so many things that are in the way. So let's go ahead and get that started. Now, usually when I choose a farm, a farm layout, I like to choose something that isn't the standard farm because it gives you something to work with. The standard farm is just like a giant empty space, which can be good and nice, but at the same time, it doesn't really give you anything design-wise to work around with, for me anyways. I like to have something that gives my design just a little bit of direction. That's part of the reason why I love the forest farm so much and the beach farm. They're very interesting and they have unique features to both of them. This is just like too many options. I'm not creative enough to come up with something on my own. <laughs> At least I don't feel that way sometimes. All right, we're making some great progress. Um, just have to clear up a little bit of the Cooper's little area. Man, I really let this place go. Look, there isn't even any spaces in between these trees. It's time to take these all down too. It's been fun. It's time for you trees to move on elsewhere. I actually also don't need this much anymore. I'll probably be putting heavy tappers on all of my trees. All right, let's check this out. I believe I have officially deforested the entire farm. I should feel bad about that, right? Yep. Clean slate to work with. Now we just got to get rid of all the pathing. I got to pick up all of the scarecrows and sprinklers so that they don't explode. And the best way for me to clear up all of this space is going to be with bombs. All right, I had to build a couple of buildings for around the farm real quick too. And we'll move some stuff around actually in order to get rid of all of this um, tilled soil. All right, so. I think what I'm going to be doing is setting up the groundwork, basically all the flooring that I'm going to be placing first and then kind of going from there. I have a general idea, but not everything is set in stone for me yet. Now, one thing I love to do with my little uh, pet area here, I always love to put down some straw flooring. I just feel like it, it adds a little bit of a, a homey touch for the little kitty or dog, whatever it is that I have at the time. So there are a few different wood floorings and I do like the weathered one a lot. Ever since the rustic plank one came out, I just love the way it looks. It looks, it gives it a boardwalk sort of feel. So I tend to use this one a lot around my fishing areas.
Now adding in a little bit of stepping stones in with the cobblestone is just, it just looks really nice. I like mixing it up a little bit. Just gives it um, something that just looks a little bit more unique. Well, most of the time. All right, that's looking okay. Just gonna add in a little bit of fencing and we'll do some decorative stuff. Okay, now a lot of people really like to have their processors for um, their animal products and all that inside of sheds and buildings. I personally just like to have it outside. I like to be able to see what's going on. And then I like to keep a uh, chest right next to the silo. And that's where all the hay will go. Now we can move in with a little bit of some brick. Cause this is like our, our nice area where we keep all the, the nice stuff. Now I like to mix and match um, a bit of my flooring. Just cause I think it gives it whatever it is that you're building just a little bit of interest. Gives it a little bit of extra pizzazz, I guess. And we'll figure something out. That. Uh, I'll probably add a tree and a couple other things in here to make it look nice. Now with the uh, stable, I do like to add a little extra room for the horse on the stable. And I feel like the rustic flooring just looks so good for that. I feel like having an outdoor patio attached to the house makes a lot more sense than keeping this area as a shipping bin spot. Okay, the house is pretty much good. We'll move that shipping bin somewhere else. And because we do have um, quite a few processors for our animals, I am going to be making a secondary processing center for all of the coop animals. Okay, so with the um, these guys here, they said I don't really like the way it looks. So we gotta add some stuff around it just to make, give it something to make it look interesting, right? Okay, and then we'll add in some grass and a little bit of decor. There, now after all of those trees are fully grown, which we can do right now, um, those will be a good fence to keep this place trapped in. Tree, oops, I almost got myself stuck. Oh, I could do um, these coffee beans here, which look really pretty, but they're only going to look good for spring and um, summer. So if you do use coffee beans for your plants, just keep in mind that they're um, not going to last. Well, I suppose that's gonna be okay for this area for now. That looks nice. I can sit back and hang out with the ducks. There we go. That all spread. The ducks will have a lot of fun, and this looks pretty nice. All right, now for the area around the slime hutch, deciding exactly what to do with this area uh, is. I'm just kind of winging this for sure. Honestly, I don't really see much decorating outside of the slime hutch going on. on. Most farms that I see, it's kind of neglected or not themed around all that often. So I wanted to see if I could do something interesting with it. Uh, my idea was that I was kind of like building the flooring shaped around like a, a slime. <laughs> we don't really have rounded stuff here so that's what i had to do yeah this is going to be like a, a nice little creepy spot <laughs> not maybe not creepy but good creepy good creepy yeah there we go one two we could definitely add some more in there All right, I think this whole like little slime area is looking pretty good. I might add a couple of statues over here. Like, um, ooh, the dark statue would look really cute right here. Fished these out of the 
the claw machine. And yeah, those are perfect for right here. And another wicked statue mm, there. All right, moving on. It's time to work on the honey area. Now this design that I'm going with isn't so much for efficiency. It's more because I just really want a nice little honey spot. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just think the brick flooring with the yellow color of the bee houses is a very nice combination. I think that looks really nice. Honey section looks good to me. Okay, it's time to work on the, oh, the animal section. I already went ahead and uh, moved my shipping bin over to here. Adjusted a couple, a little bit of the fencing here because it was bothering me and moved the greenhouse over one. All right, I feel like uh, this area and the duck pond are all looking pretty good. Okay, so I've been stocking up on seasonal plants for a long time. I like to have, um, I usually like to buy 500 in a new season in my later years. And I do have some pressure nozzles so that we can have um, some good range. And I like to pop it right behind here. <laughs> it doesn't look too creepy, but um, yeah, it looks nice. It looks fine. Okay, we have this. Now there are a few different layouts that you can do with uh, your iridium sprinklers to get the full extent of this. Um, I don't remember exactly where I saw this uh, layout. Honestly, I probably saw it on Reddit somewhere. There are layouts that will be able to cover a lot more if you have like the sprinklers on the outside with the pressure nozzles that will cover the whole thing and you'll be able to save some space, but I'm into it more for the aesthetic than I am the optimization. So that's the layout there and that'll cover up the entire square here. Okay, I'm not gonna do like anything too super crazy with the design of the plants. Um, I might just do like a classic uh, diamond style with some varying other crops in the corners. I kind of like the look of the rhubarb more, but if we do the cauliflower in the middle, we might get some giant crops, so we'll do that. All right, the fields are all watered. All we need to do from here is um, add some flooring around it and make sure that it looks all good. Okay, so with wood chippers, I normally, um, those are one of the few things, few processors that I try to always have a, um, a hopper attached to but I don't think I'm going to be doing a, um, a hopper setup with these. We're just gonna do some basics. We will make you a sign for hardwood. Moving on, we've got to get the tappery set up. I'm not gonna be tapping any mahogany seeds purely because um, I really don't need any sap or anything. These usually just get cobblestone just to keep the seeds from spreading. Tapper, 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 tapper. And actually, let's grab this tapper real quick. Put it on the sign and right there. Like obviously, but still. Now, usually with the fish ponds, I like to use the dark sign. I just really like the way it looks, but um, for this one, just to kind of fit what we have, we're going to use the wooden signs. All right, things that I like to decorate over here at, um, the barrel brazier I think looks good for lighting and I, I I know they're not functional but I do like to throw some casks around I just think that they look good with um, this area 
Okay, now that all the various different sections are pretty fleshed out with what I want them to do, want them to be, now is the point where I kind of like look into what exactly, how exactly do I want everything to look, right? For the rest of it, no real theme, just fill things out to make it look nice. It is mostly going to be like trees and plants. I sure do love unnecessary fencing. Okay, so this area here, I always have a tricky time deciding on what to do around the golden clock, so I'm actually going to use this stone flooring that we removed from the patio for this. And or maybe we'll just like do a nice little like centerpiece feature with a bench. We can plant some flowers. Nice little area to have a cup of tea and sit back and relax. And I can't add something right there. We have to leave that. Even though the house is fully upgraded, you still can't build in that spot, which is it's a little weird, but it's what it is. And last, we have this area for our dear sweet, Emily. She needs to have a couple more things over here. Let's go ahead and throw this crystal. We're just gonna expand out her little crystal palace. All right, I hope she likes it. I would. Everything is shaping up really well. The only thing left is to fix up Grandpa's place. And I think what we're going to do is actually just um, have our statues of endless fortune over here. Now this is mostly just to show off. <laughs> show off to Grandpa that we made it. Look at that. Yeah, we'll put the vase here, kind of like an urn. I think that looks pretty good for grandpa's statue right here. Okay, the very last thing I need to do is color all of the farm buildings. Now, usually my aesthetic is very um, dark purple and black, and I really like that. But this is my, um, my bright and cheery farm. All right, and last touch. Gotta give the cat a, a nice little treat. And I think that should be pretty good for what I want. I guess the next part is gonna be the tour. All right, it's time to check out the farm. It's been a few days. We have Emily's fun little area right here. George sending me some stones again. My little patio. Of course, for our golden clock, we have a nice little seating area. Oh, and all my tea bushes are ready, so we could collect those if we want. All of the crops are harvested, or not harvested, they're ready to be harvested. All of our processors are ready. Let's go ahead and let all of the animals out. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, they're so mad at me. <laughs> I haven't fed them in a while. Let's uh, let's just let them do their thing and have them destroy all the hard work I did. You guys go right ahead. Enjoy yourself. And of course we have our processors all down here. This is our fish hatchery. I think it looks super swell. I really like it a lot. Up this way we have our piggy barn and other animals. Oh, looks like we got some giants. It's just great. They're going to destroy all of this, which is totally fine because I've neglected them for a very long time. The fields are looking lovely. To probably get a screenshot before um, they all get destroyed, huh? Let me go stand by our Krobus. 
Oh, look at that. Looks so good. I gave a little fish to our, our sashimi cat over here. I really, really enjoy this. Those all gotta go get chopped down. We've got some stuff to harvest, but all in all, I think this place looks pretty good and I'm definitely pretty proud of it. I love this whole slime area. It's gonna be great when we have a lightning storm. I haven't had any yet this season. And I'm sure that this is going to look super fantastic in other seasons as well. Where am I? Oh, here I am. <laughs> We've got our processing center in here with all of our crystallariums. We've got our winery up this way. I really like this whole setup with uh, the greenhouse, adding a few little features just to kind of give it a, a better feel. The layout of the crops I really enjoy. I think that's a, a really nice setup for a late game. Let's see if the ducks want to enjoy their time in the water or do i even have any ducks i don't even know there's one well i'm sure they'll get to it eventually <laughs> now this farm is definitely <laughs> not built for being super profitable but i think it looks really good and that's kind of what i was going for well friends that's it for this uh farm cleanup and farm tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed cleaning this place up. It took a lot longer than I thought, but <laughs> it was definitely worth it. All right, well, I'm Wickedy. Thanks so much for hanging out in the valley with me and I will see you next time.